everybody, welcome to another episode of Beast for Build. I'm super happy to be back. In this episode, we got a lot of fun stuff going on. So we got new wheels for the BRZ. Uh, they just arrived, so I wanna show you guys the new wheels. We're gonna test fit them on the car, see how they look before we get tires put on them, make sure everything's good there. And then, we're gonna pull the engine out of the engine bay, we're gonna clean up the whole engine bay, and we're going to paint it to match our new wheels. Stay tuned. All right, you guys ready to see these wheels? I'm super excited to show them off. These are the new wheels for this BRZ. This is what it's gonna look like. This is a Koenig Hypergram in the brand new color that is a, they call it opal red, but it's a candy red. It's like candy, I don't know if it's candy apple. I don't know what puts the apple in the candy, but it's a candy red. I had to learn all about the painting technique that was done on this thing uh, while I was at the paint shop so I could get the right paint to match our engine bay. Um, so this one is a 10 and a half by 18 to fit our BRZ, uh, wide body style, and we're gonna run a, a nine and a half in the front. Um, what else can I say about this wheel? It's flow formed, so it's nice and lightweight. This is a huge wheel, I mean, as far as the width wise, and it's nice and lightweight. Uh, it looks great, and I'm super excited. So big thanks to Koenig Wheels uh, for sending these out to us. So guys, I'll put a link in the description. Please go check it out, check out what they have. If you're interested in wheels, think about getting some Koenig Wheels. Because uh, I can say like these are we're not running uh, rep wheels anymore and uh, they're good quality and they're lightweight and they're performance oriented Which is great. I mean if you look at their formula D team how many drivers they have running these wheels. It's quite impressive So I'm really excited to be like yeah Great partnership. We got going with Koenig wheels look for them on more of our builds coming forward as well And uh, yeah, if you guys see a set that you think would look good on the Aston Martin That's the next move. I'm trying to get some for that Aston Martin. So uh yeah, this red color is going to kind of set the paint scheme for this car. There's going to be, uh, for right now, the idea is red and black. So black paint will probably be modified at the very least. Red wheels, red engine bay. So I'm thinking engine cover and engine bay will get sprayed red in this episode. And um, yeah, and I might later on, I think the color of this car is gonna change quite a bit, but the red is probably gonna stay because the engine bay is gonna be red. So another car that goes, another color that goes really good with this red is like a nice tan cream color, kind of like a Adam LZ's color in his car. But I think he just changed it, so that opens back up tan for me. Uh, this car has a lot of curves, and tan really shows off curves very well. So I'm, I've been thinking about that color as well. Anyways, let's throw these wheels on the car and see how they look. All right. Well, turns out that with the car being up so high and the suspension completely hanging free, it looks a little bit ridiculous. But we can get an eye for the color scheme. And I think that the red on the black is going to look really cool, uh, especially once we get some good tires on these. So I have some Federal RSRs for the ones in the front, and I don't know what I want to run in the back yet because we're probably just going to turn them into smoke quite rapidly. So I might want to get a little bit less expensive tire. Maybe uh, one from the, another one from the Federal line or maybe something a little bit cheaper, I'm not really sure. Uh, but that's what they're gonna look like and I'm, I'm really, really happy with this, uh, this wheel combo. It's really, they're really gonna pop off. I got some taillights that are gonna help with the look as well coming, um, but I don't wanna spoil too much stuff, but that's, that's our new wheels. I'm super, super stoked on that. So the next thing that we gotta do is we gotta get this engine out of here, we gotta get the battery out of here, we gotta get everything out of our way so I can go ahead and spray this engine bay to match that candy apple red color. While I'm in there, I'm gonna spray the wheel wells a little bit black so there's no more blue stuff hanging out. Um, now to do that, we gotta get the engine hoist in here and to do that, we gotta get the Aston Martin out of here. So that's the next project. Gotta get the Aston Martin down and out. All right, we got some space. The shop is opened up, ready to start trying to pull this engine. So uh, the new electrical stuff that we did is gonna add to the headache of pulling this out, but uh, it should be pretty straightforward. So all the positive connections I'm gonna undo and I'll probably label them. Those all need to go into a new fuse block that I ordered. Uh, I knew I needed fuses. I was doing inline fuses, but rather than that, I'm just gonna do a fuse block. A lot of you guys sent me some good links. So I ordered one of those and we'll install that when we get the motor back in. So that'll handle all the positive stuff from over here. There's a few other wires that run into the dash. We'll have to unplug those and label the relay that uh, that goes to. And then the ECU will kind of sit, sit on top of the engine. This stuff, the wiring will come over to this. I will hook up the um, engine hoist to here and here, take up, some of the, um, take up some of the slack, you know, lift some weight off the engine. 
um, and then I will uh, get underneath, unscrew the motor mounts, and we will be good to go and hopefully just pull this thing out without too much drama. So weird that I already regret deciding to paint the engine bay. <laughs> There's so much work that goes into doing this job. So uh, we got the engine out. That went smoothly. Um, not too much of a headache there. Next thing we got to do is uh, I think I'm going to pull the fenders off uh, from each side and, um, and then work with some of this wiring. I think if I finagle that mess right there, I might be able to flip it up and get it on the windshield, get a lot of it out of the way so we don't have to worry about masking any of that off. All right, fenders are off, looking good. Uh, these things that hold the fenders on to, they kind of, that's what the fender bolts up to. Uh, I'm gonna paint them this, the color of the exterior of the car. So that one's gonna go from blue to black. That one's gonna stay black, but it'll get another coat of black. Um, wiring came out okay. This, we only have one day to finish this up. So including paint and stuff like that, I'm actually really running against time here. So I'm just gonna have to do a lot of masking in that area and paint around those things. Um, Let's see, so uh, the next thing I wanna do is some welding. We have a couple little projects that we need to hit with the welder before we move on to cleaning up and painting. This thing needs to be lowered down a little bit. So I need to essentially remove that lip and, and maybe bend this down just a little bit. I wish I could cut a channel out and weld a nice piece of metal in there, but I don't have the right type of metal that I would wanna use that to do for that. I, everything I have is too heavy duty of a gauge. Uh, so right where those lines are, that's where it's gonna get cut, folded over, smush down a little bit to make room for the engine and um, also that there are some crinkles in my frame rails that there were not supposed to be I sent this to a frame straightener but unfortunately a lot of those guys will scam you so that's exactly what happened here that stuff should have been straightened up and supported in some sort of professional way instead I was just told oh it's done don't worry about it so the big one is right here uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut a couple pieces of metal as added support and weld them in there as a pocket and um, it's always tricky, it's always a bad situation when you're looking at this because if you over support it, you, you, you put something in there to patch it and essentially you, you reinforce it too much, then you're losing part of your crumple zone. Um, and if you under support it, then you're not really doing a good enough job. So I'm gonna try and find that happy medium and uh, hopefully we'll never be in another big wreck so we don't have to worry about it. The only other option is to scrap the whole car, which I'm obviously not gonna do at this point. So uh, yep, yeah, that's that, it's time to start welding. Okay, that's taken care of. You can see how I just kind of lowered that down a little bit. I welded it. Like this is all built uh, by them just smushing pieces of metal together and then pinch welding it everywhere. So this weld's gonna be much, much stronger than what they've done. And then I welded the two pieces together on the pinch point there. Now, if I need more room, I could just basically grab a mallet and kind of bend this down a little bit. I won't, ruin, I won't ruin too much of the structural integrity. These welds are pretty messy on the sides. That's the next thing. I'm gonna go ahead and clean those up and then I'm gonna cut out pieces and support the inside of the frame rails. All right, welding is done. We got those supports in there. Um, just kind of ran some strips of weld on both sides of uh, those plates. Now, if it gets in a wreck again, it probably won't bend there anymore. It'll have to bend somewhere else down the line. It's not the best option. I think the best option would be to cut it right there and kind of tube frame the rest out uh, and cut it right there as well. But um, I don't know what I would be doing with the tubing. I don't know what gauge tubing to buy and all that other stuff. So this is gonna have to work for now and you know, we'll roll with it. Hopefully we won't need, you know, it, if, it, if it gets in an impact again, it's just not gonna bend in that spot. It'll bend somewhere else and you know, hopefully that'll leave enough crash support 
Anyways, moving on. Um, so we got uh, we got to clean up now, and so I don't have running water in the shop. I'd love to use a pressure washer for this, but uh, I'm gonna have to just use pressurized air. So I'm gonna get that blow gun attachment for the air compressor and start spraying all sorts of areas like this out and try and get as much of this crap away from here as I can. Well, that wasn't too bad. A lot of this stuff cleaned up pretty quickly. I just used a wire brush and the uh, air compressor. Here's my main problem right now. I'm starting to really second guess my red color. Um, the red color to match the wheels, you know, the wheels are like an accent piece and the engine bay is like a, I don't know, it's a big piece. Cause I, I, I'm trying to picture engine bay red and then engine cover red. It seems a little, it seems a little bad. It seems like maybe the engine bay should be the same color as the outside of the car. And then maybe like engine cover should be red and wheels would be red. And then they're kind of like matching accent pieces, but not bring in so much red into the inside of here. I wish I had time to like sit down and Photoshop this thing, but I don't. So I really don't know what to do. I'm like, I'm like really stumped. Also the red paint does cost a lot of money. I spent $400 on red paint uh, that I could totally return almost a hundred percent of it. I could use very little of it and just paint the uh, engine cover red to match the wheels. And then I could grab, I could use spray paint and I could spray paint the inside of this black. That's my like, that's my other thought right now is I'm thinking like black might just, since the outside's gonna be black, the inside could be black. And then also if I like vinyl wrapped it down the line or painted it or whatever, having an engine bay being black won't really be like a big contrast to whatever else we do with the car's body. I'm gonna have this car for a very long time. So I expect, you know, more color changes in its life. I expect a vinyl wrap in the not too long future, uh, not too distant future, sorry. So I'm stumped. I don't know what to do. You know what, this is weird. I, I didn't plan on doing this at all, but I'm gonna end this episode right here. Uh, guys, leave a comment. Um, I'll see if I can put a Photoshop up uh, right here of um, what it might look like if I did the candy apple red in the interior and the valve cover. Um, you guys uh, leave comments below. Let me know what you'd like, what, what you think. Um, and uh, when we come back, I will get tires put on the wheels so we can lower the car down and look at that. And I will paint this engine bay. Uh, whatever color we decide. I'm kind of leaning towards black, to be honest. Um, I think that might be a better idea. So uh, let me know what you think. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. Uh, if you like Beast for Build, you want to find us in more places, head over to Beast for Build. Nope, you don't. You, you go to Facebook first, and then you find Beast for Build on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram. We're Beast for Build all over there. If you want to help out and support, check out these new hats we got. You guys asked for them. We have the curved bill hats now. This is called a six panel hat where the other ones are five and it creates a more flattened bill. These are the curved bill, kind of like more baseball cap dad hat style hats. Um, and they fit really nice. They're nice and comfy and they, they look good. So uh, those are on the store now. And um, sorry it took me so long to get those hats. I know a lot of you guys don't want just the flat, flat build hats. So those are on the store at the store right now. Uh, they will ship out immediately. So anyways, like I was saying, if you if you like the show and you want to help out and support, head over to beastforbuild.com, scroll down to the shop and pick yourself up anything there. All the proceeds of that go directly towards these builds. Uh, Chelsea and I package everything up and ship it to you guys personally. So there's no middleman. All the money stays directly in house to pretty much fund this car right here. So thank you guys so much that have already supported it as well. Let me know what you think about the color. I'll be back tomorrow and uh, well, actually tomorrow I have to work on the Mustang. I'm gonna do a quick, quickie episode on the Mustang so it doesn't, it's not gonna take any time away from this really. Tomorrow's supposed to be my day off. And then uh, I'm probably gonna work on Adrian's street bike as well tomorrow. So that's tomorrow land. And then, um, then we will paint this thing, whatever we decide. Whatever the internet decides. Sounds good guys, see you then. Peace. Come on.